Hello there, I'm Eric Renault, and this is a new video tutorial for tipsquirrel.com and we're going to be having a look at the new editing properties in Photoshop CS6. Now just to show you the setup, I've got two layers here, one called props and one called switches, just one on top of the other. Now you can use moving images for this if you wish, but for the sake of my poor old computer, I'm using still images while I'm recording a tutorial. OK, now we need to change the workspace very slightly. Now you can see that I've got Mini Bridge open at the very bottom and next to the tab that says Mini Bridge is Timeline and that's what I need. So I'm going to click on Timeline and it's asking me what kind of timeline would I like to create. And If I click this little downward pointing arrow here, I can create a video timeline or a frame animation. Well, I'm going to create a video timeline here. So I'm OK where I'm set and then I can just click on Create Video Timeline and away we go. Now you can see straight away that it's brought in props and switches straight into the timeline and leveled them all up at the beginning at the end and that's fine that's a nice way of doing things but we don't actually want that to happen in this video. What I'd like to do is to have the props layer visible and then the switches layer come on over the top. So I'm going to go to the end of the switches layer here and you can see that my cursor changes and that means then that I can change the starting point of that. So I'm going to just bring that along and drop it down there. And you can see that where my current time indicator is situated, that's where we can see what's going on and how it just pops in at uh, that point there. OK, if I press the space bar, it'll play through nicely for us and we can see that in real time. And so our switches layer just kind of pops on. And that's really not what we want at all. It's a bit in your face. So let's see if we can't change that a little bit. Well, one of the first things we can look at is to put on a fade. And we can find all the transitions under this little square here. So if I click on that, and there is our fade. Now, a lot of these will only work if you've got two clips butted up against one another and more of that some other time. But for now, we're just going to use the fade. So I'm going to click and hold on fade and then drag that down. You can see that I'm actually holding the fade and I can take it onto the clip and just drop it on where I want it. So I can just unclick my mouse and it's done the fade for me. So let's play that through and see what that looks like. I'm going to press space bar again and on it comes. Now that's a bit better, that's a bit easier on the eye. I'm going to press space bar again to stop. Now I can change the speed of that transition if I wish just by getting hold of the end here. And you can see that I've got a very similar cursor to what, what I had last time when I was doing the clip. And the same thing happens. I can just change the length of that to either make it a longer transition or a shorter one. OK, let's just have another look at that one more time through. And that's OK, but we've still got this horrible straight edge there. Now we're in Photoshop and we know how to make feathered edges. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to make a mask. So making sure that my switches layer is active, I'm then going to create a mask using the create mask icon down the bottom. And then I'm going to get a gradient tool and I'm going to put a gradient on the mask so that uh, it's got a nice feathered edge. I always do this the wrong way around. Let's see if I've got this right way around this time. There we go, that's nice. Okay, so I've got a nice feathered edge. So now when I play it through, up it comes and we've got a nice softer edge. And that's a bit easier on the eye but still not exactly what I want. What I'd like is for it to kind of fade in from the right hand side over to the left. That's what I'd like. Now I could move the layer from the right to left if I just untwirl this, click it and it brings it down. You can see that I've got all kinds of things that I can have a bit of a play with. And one of them is the position of this layer where I can put the the layer outside of the picture. Let me just get my move tool and show you what I mean. I can move this out. I've got hold of the shift key to keep it um, level, by the way. I could have it starting out here and as the time goes on, bring it in. But that's going to look a bit, uh, well, a bit 1970s, really. So I don't really want to do that. What I'd like to do is have that nice soft fade in. Well, that's OK, too, because underneath all the position, opacity and style, you can see that I've got layer mask position. So I can change the layer mask position. That's exactly what I want to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my layer mask here on my uh, layer and I'm going to click this link. Now my, my mask is completely separate to my layer. That's quite handy. Let me control Z that to get that back in position. 
I take my current time indicator back to here and then I'm going to use the position of the layer mask let's get rid of that fade first of all if I just click on it and click delete you can see that now it just pops in I'm going to get hold of my layer mask position and click this stopwatch here which adds the first keyframe and I say at that point I would like the layer mask hey let's click on the layer mask this time shall we I would like the layer mask to be just here so it's off the screen and then by here I would like it and again I'm holding shift just to make sure that I've got it in position I would like it just there so let's have a look see how we've got on press spacebar again and we can see how we've gone and there is our soft wipe not too bad at all but let's uh, change the opacity a bit shall we let's uh, have the opacity come in as well so we could use the fade but let's take a little bit more control and let's have the opacity here at there we can set that at zero of the layer not the layer mask zero and then just here we can have it at 100 percent so we've done the same as the fade really but we've just taken a little bit more control let's press space and there we are okay let's twirl that back closed so it makes it all nice and neat and let's add another layer this time i'm going to write tipsquirrel.com i think so i'll just type tipsquirrel.com get my move tool and move that into place there we go that loop it doesn't really stick out very much let's put a quick drop shadow on that just so you can see it a bit better really uh, drop shadow there it is um, and we'll bring that just out just a little bit there we go okay so that makes it a bit more visible now you can see that it plonked that down exactly where the current time indicator was and actually that's okay for me I quite like that it's going to be about there when we want to start we can move that there. good okay let's play that using the space bar again and oh there it goes it's come straight onto the screen so let's use our opacity again or maybe our fade we can put our fade on there we fade onto there so we're fading that in we'll make it a bit quicker there you see how quickly you can get things done okay good um but that uh that drop shadow i'd like that to come in separately and you can do that make sure that this is highlighted Let's twirl that down and you can see that we have a style as well. So I can put that current time indicator right there at the end of when tipscroll.com has faded in. I can click the style stopwatch. I can set that at nothing. Turn it off. I can come along here a little bit and I can turn it back on again. And now that should fade in. So we've got a wipe our fade and our fade and there we are all done in a matter of minutes I think less than 10 minutes there and we've come up with a nice little sort of opening maybe for a, a DVD about this particular location which is the Gatwick Aviation Museum now at the time of recording this we're just a week away from going to the Gatwick Aviation Museum as part of our tip-ups now if you've missed that one don't panic uh, there are other tip-ups go to tipsgrill.com click on the link at the very top of the page that says tip ups and see if there's one coming to your area soon that's it i'm eric reno thank you very much for listening i'll see you next time